What are brainstorming, group polarization, groupthink, and bias sampling? These four processes often contribute to process losses in group settings. The first process is brainstorming, a technique we use to identify a large number of new ideas. Participants are asked to share their thoughts one by one, speaking freely without criticism. No idea is too silly to be added to the list. Then, the group discusses each idea before choosing the best one. Ironically, individuals tend to create more and better ideas when working alone than they do as part of a brainstorming group. There are several reasons for this. 1. Social loafing. As others contribute ideas, individuals feel less motivated to be creative and work hard to identify new ones. 2. Production blocking. While waiting for their turn, some people forget their ideas or lose interest in the session. 3. Evaluation apprehension. Although we aren't supposed to judge one another, we still do, and we're still apprehensive about sharing our ideas with others. Social psychologists have identified several ways we can overcome these challenges. Start brainstorming sessions with what's called brain writing. Time of the prompts you want to ask participants, such as, what are the strengths and weaknesses of XYZ? Or, what options do we have for ABC? One prompt per page, and give each person a single page. Give them three to five minutes to write down as many ideas as they can about that one topic. When time is up, ask them to pass the prompt to the next person, at which point they'll receive a new prompt and the cycle continues. When everyone has addressed every prompt, collect the sheets of paper and begin the brainstorming session. You'll already have the best ideas on those pages and the brainstorming session will help bring them to light. Now that everyone has had a chance to think independently, the session should be more productive. During the rounds of brainstorming, it's important that all judgments are suspended until the group can no longer come up with any new ideas. Thankfully, we now have software and apps that can help us facilitate electronic brainstorming. Using technology, participants can remain anonymous, yet we can still identify that members contributed to the discussion. This also reduces wait times, which prevents people from spending too much time evaluating their ideas before they type them up. Group polarization is the second process. When group members have similar beliefs at the start of a discussion, their opinions tend to become more extreme as they discuss the topic. That is, discussion among like-minded people tends to strengthen pre-existing attitudes. If most individuals in the group are cautious, then the group will probably be cautious. If most individuals are risk-takers, then the group will probably take risks. Sometimes, this polarization creates division in the group. The GIF presented on the slide depicts the Pew Research Center's data on political polarization in the U.S. Since 1994, Americans' political beliefs have become increasingly polarized. Group polarization is such a well-documented phenomenon that social psychologists have put forth a number of explanations. First, persuasive arguments theory says the greater the number of arguments to which members are exposed, and the more persuasive the arguments, the more extreme their attitudes will become. Second, social comparison theory suggests we compare ourselves to others, and when we learn about their beliefs, we adopt more extreme beliefs in the same direction as theirs. Third, group polarization allows groups to distinguish themselves from other groups, thereby contributing to the process of social categorization. The third process is called groupthink. It's a decision-making style that focuses more on agreement than accuracy, and therefore can lead to poor decisions. Instead of choosing the best option, a group might be more concerned with getting the work done and checking it off their agenda. Examples include the Challenger Space Shuttle explosion in 1986, the Columbia Space Shuttle explosion in 2003, and the Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. With both space shuttle explosions, NASA engineers voiced their concerns to their managers, who ignored them in favor of agreeing with top executives. With the Bay of Pigs invasion, the plan was flawed in many ways, but President Kennedy's team of advisors agreed on it anyway, in part because they needed to make a decision. At the top of the figure on this slide, you can see the antecedents of groupthink, the variables that lead a group to adopt this style. When groups are highly cohesive, when group members are similar to one another, when the group is isolated from other groups, when it lacks decision-making procedures, when the group is under stress, from time pressures, for example, in the bottom half of the figure, you can also see the symptoms associated with groupthink. For instance, people in these groups tend to be close-minded, pressure others to conform, and make poor decisions for themselves. 
Social psychologists have found evidence that these strategies can help group leaders prevent or minimize groupthink. First, remain neutral. Avoid taking a stand early in the discussion. Second, encourage criticism explicitly. Ask questions, evaluate pros and cons, and assume there's always room for improvement. Third, assign a devil's advocate to challenge assumptions and ideas. Fourth, form subgroups. Each one can discuss the same issue separately from the larger group. Fifth, consult other groups and external sources of information. Never assume the group has all the information it needs. Six, plan for multiple discussions. Again, to collect additional information and make the best decision. The final process loss concept we'll cover in this lecture is biased sampling. Communication and the sharing of information are crucial to group operations, but members rarely have all the information they need. For example, some members know about one aspect of the decision, while others know about a different aspect. And, none of them realize they know something the others don't, or that they're missing information. Biased sampling, then, is the tendency for groups to spend more time discussing information that has already been shared than information that isn't known to everyone. This lack of information hinders their ability to make sound decisions. This process also contributed to both space shuttle explosions, the Challenger, and the Columbia. Engineers had access to information that top executives did not, and vice versa. The lack of information sharing resulted in human errors that proved to be fatal for the astronauts on board. So how can we prevent biased sampling from happening? 1. Leaders and organizations should encourage members to participate fully in the group. If a member hasn't said much, ask them to share their thoughts. They likely know something or have information about something that could be useful to the group. 2. Encourage members to share new information. This seems obvious, but we rarely take stock of what we don't know. Periodically pause the discussion to ask if anyone has any new information to offer or if they have any questions that need to be answered before a decision is made. Third, make sure all the group members understand the decision, their task, and the context. The more they know, the better prepared they are to find gaps and identify information they have that could be useful. Fourth, open lines of communication so that people can share up and down the hierarchy, as well as horizontally, across groups and departments. Together, these strategies help illuminate pertinent information that can save the group from making poor decisions. Collectively, the four processes described in this video contribute to process losses, but can be turned into gains if best practices are implemented. In the next section, you'll learn about social dilemmas and how we might address them.